Hunting Canada geese in February is a challenge enough, but hunting with a bow and arrow? Well, to make it even more challenging, we used long bows. How and why we spent an entire day with a wind chill below zero, I'll answer that in the next few minutes, so stay tuned and join Ron LeClaire, Norman Dave Blaker, and myself, Fred Trost, for a bow and arrow goose hunt. It's Thursday night, time for Michigan Outdoors. From the rugged shore and woodlands of the north, it's history of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fisheries. To the farmlands of the southern counties, we'll look around again at all that waits the sportsman in the state of Michigan. And sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow and the stillness of the forest lies encased in Arctic cold, the wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can, it tells you of the beauty in the state of Michigan. Canada geese are magnificent birds, but in the past 20 years, the population has not only been booming, but the large variety, the giant Canadas, weighing over 10 pounds, have decided to spend their winters in southern Michigan. Because of the amount they eat, they leave a lot of litter on lawns and golf courses, and they've turned into a major pest in southern Michigan, even in the winter. For the past few winters, the DNR has opened a special goose season around the urban areas in southern Michigan to try to eliminate some of the problem geese and also give hunters an opportunity to put a few extra geese on the table at this time of year. Now you hunt in the winter much the same way as you do in the fall, decoys out in the field using calls to try to attract the flocks in, but of course you have to wear lots of long underwear. On this day, the wind chill was seven below. Well, that's right, we're going to be hunting geese with bows and arrows. Bobby Canope, a well-known hunting and fishing guide throughout North America, set this hunt up for us, and it's right next to a major southern Michigan city. This field is so close that firearms aren't legal. That's why we're using bows and arrows. And we're not using compounds or even recurves. We're using the old, traditional longbows. You've seen Ron LeClaire on Michigan Outdoors with his longbow. Ron has been a longtime muzzle loader and bow hunter. He founded the Michigan Longbow Association about five years ago, a group of people who enjoy using the original bow that had been used for thousands of years and wasn't modernized until recently. Also on this hunt was Norm Blaker and his son Dave. Both of them are excellent hunters, particularly good with long bows. Now you can tell by the number of arrows that Norm brought that he's a real optimist. But his equipment is all self-made, not just his arrows and bows, but much of his outdoor clothing he made himself. We set our blinds in a fence row, set the decoys out 20 or 30 yards, and this day was spent watching for geese coming over the horizon from a nearby river, which has open water most of the winter. Keeping warm was our main project, and the lack of geese on this day gave us lots of time to talk about hunting. Uh, what's your range, Norm? Oh, I'd say uh, 25, 30 yards. We ought to be able to make it look interesting, at least. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive that we're going to have any tre tremendous kill, but hey, if one of us gets one, I'm going to feel pretty good about yeah. it, really. Yeah. The, the closer, the better, actually. If we can get them in close, we got a better chance. Now, the yeah. bow you're using. You're using a Great Northern Bush Bow. Great Northern Bush Bow. This is just like yours, Fred. Mm-hmm. Except, except, except the weight. The yeah, draw the, weight. Well, this is 70 pounds, and uh, yours is... Uh, 25, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I wished it was. That would be nice. Well, what, I, what do you... Actually, when, in this kind of weather, cold weather, when you're bundled all up, it, it, it's better to have... If I had a lighter bow, I'd probably have it. Like mm -hmm. maybe 60 pounds, even 55 would do the job. What about you, Norm? You cranking a 100-pounder? No, I'm <laughs> shooting about a 60-pounder myself. This is a, a bow that I made myself, and uh, we'll just see how it turns out. It's been shooting pretty good for me, so I'll give it a try. Now, the arrows, what arrow are you using, Ryan? Just a broadhead, like a, like a deer hunting broadhead? Yeah, this is a, I usually, normally I use a two-bladed head on deer, <clears throat> but I, I tried some three-bladed heads, I thought. Now, being traditional archers, though, you know, you know the Indians shot geese. Yeah. Using flint broadheads. Yeah. You're not using one of your flint? Not no. today. <laughs> I, I'm using regular steel arrowheads today. But no, you've, you've taken with your own flint arrows that you've chipped. Yeah, you've I've taken I've, a variety of games. Oh, yeah. I just killed a black bear this year with, with a flint tipped arrow and completely skinned him and, and cut him up with a uh, glass knife, which is like an obsidian. Mm -hmm. 
Norm Blaker is quite a guy, an original mountain man, independent, as close to a pioneer as you'll find in the 1980s. Now, you've seen this group of fellas demonstrating their archery skills at the outdoor fair. They put on a shooting show that's very entertaining and impressive. They warm up on styrofoam discs. You can hear the arrows hit. Well, that's impressive, all right. But then they work down even smaller. Now watch Norm Blaker smack this tennis ball out of the air. Tennis ball is still just a warm up. They get down to 50 cent pieces. And believe it or not, when they shoot at these small coins, you can even hear them hit. No doubts there. In slow motion, it's impressive. And can you believe that the 50 cent coins are still just a warm up? Here, Ron LeClaire tries for an aspirin, tiny white pill. You can see it as we rock back and forth in slow motion, that white aspirin right there above the trees. The shot. The aspirin doesn't come down. He got it. Ron LeClaire and Norm Blaker captured my attention and my admiration with their longbows, so much so that I've become a longbow shooter complete with a specially made quiver with the Outdoors Club logo. I'm giving this traditional archery a try. The main reason, it's fun. <laughs> Finally, 15 minutes before sundown after waiting all day without having a goose come near, one goose appears over the horizon and heads for our decoys. The moment we've been waiting for, none of us have ever tried this before and it's over in a flash. We all missed, but was it a disappointment? Quite the contrary. What do you think, Mr. LeClaire? That we was exciting. Was that, that was worth waiting all day for, <laughs> just that one goose and that one shot. Next time I'll know uh, to shoot a little higher. He was, he was farther out than I thought, I think. I shot a little bit low. We found our arrows. Oh yeah, we found them, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Now why didn't, I want to know why Norm, you didn't shoot sooner. He was over right in front of you. I don't know, I just, I was, I thought he was gonna land. And I thought, well, I try that. And then bingo, everything started happening. So, so by the you, time you, I got a decent shot, it wasn't a decent shot anymore. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get a shot. No huh. problem. Well, Davey, you took a fling. She betcha. What do you think of goose hunting with a ball? <laughs> Only one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at this golden moment one more time in slow motion. Ron's shot was a little low and slightly ahead of the goose. Mine, on the other hand, was high and behind it. Now, just above the trees on the right of your screen, you can see Dave Blaker's arrow streaking in, a uh, sh dark shadow back and forth in slow motion. Now, his shot was on target, but ran out of gas over the distance. But well, we didn't solve the nuisance goose problem. We didn't bring home any meat for the table, but we had a great day hunting geese in Michigan outdoors. It's no secret we had to go to the freezer for this recipe. Beatrice Ayamuri from Saginaw sent us one for Swiss goose that I think, Kathy, is terrific. Oh, a little bit different than a roasted goose. Uh, it doesn't dry out in this recipe. Well, you can see goose. Those are the you, breasts. Well, when you skin them, they have absolutely no fat or no oh, fat nothing. within the muscle. Very, very good. And you're going to go ahead and cut this into slices and use natural tenderizers so you don't get all the seasonings that you find in the yeah, seasoned tenderizer. Do you really think the tenderizer is necessary? No, I don't, because basically it's salt. It's very, very refined salt, and I just as soon not use it. But that's what the recipe yes. called for, so we'll try it that yes. way. And dry onion soup mix, we're going to go ahead and mix it right in with the strips as they're frying. This is almost like a, a beef recipe, a pot roast. Oh, yeah, it would be perfect with beef. And a can of cream of celery soup, mm. and it's going to kind of make a sauce, and it will brown quite quickly because your meat and everything is hot. We're going to add a little bit of water, about two cups of water. Cream so of celery soup is good with a lot of small game. Right, because it's mild. It doesn't mm -hmm. have, you know, a heavy flavor to it. And some celery and carrots. And it's going to kind of make a stew like when you're all done. Mm -hmm. And of course your onion. Can I don't think you could have a recipe like this without onion. Well, this is sort of a, a stir fry stew. Yeah, it'd be great in a crock pot too. Because mm -hmm. this is going to simmer for two hours, just like that. 
Like I say, it makes a very nice, thick, rich gravy when you're all done. And that's it. Swiss goose right here. It looks like beef. Mm -hmm. It looks like, uh, from, from our master technician <laughs> of the kitchen, uh, a member of the Clean Plate Club again. <laughs> yes. Freddie, this, it, it does look like beef. It tastes kind of like beef, uh, beef, too, because it doesn't have that, that waterfall flavor mm -hmm. to it. And uh, it's excellent. And served on the potatoes is really yeah, a hearty, stick-to-your-ribs yeah, type it potato. Is. It's good. tender. It, uh, it's tasty. fork tender. And it would be nutritious because it doesn't have uh, any fat in oh, it, Oh, absolutely. And, the, and it's Great cooked recipe. clean through. Yep. Swiss goose. I think I think goose. This is becoming one of my favorite <laughs> wild game meats. Different is than goose venison. Meat. Swiss goose. Highly recommend it. A recipe that you should try. Which type of branch is better for a deer to eat in the winter? A small matchstick size, or one the size of a pencil? A deer that is forced to eat pencil-sized branches is probably headed for starvation. The nutrition of a branch is in the bark, in the twigs with the newest growth, highest in protein, and easiest to digest are the twigs the size of a matchstick. Ron Wyman from Manitou Beach knows how to make a fish look huge. Hold it close to the camera. That's a 23-inch, six-pound largemouth bass he caught trolling a shad wrap in Round Lake, Lenawee County. Three ounces smaller at five pounds 13 is this 23-inch smallmouth bass taken by Hugh Logsdon from Canton, trolling a chub in Leelanau County's beautiful Glen Lake. Little Bay de Noc produces big perch. Here's a 15-inch two-pounder taken on a wiggler in the spring by Mark Brower from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Saginaw Bay seems to be the place for walleye. Here's a 28-inch nine-pounder, which Tim Kochani from Midland caught through the ice, jigging a Clio. Spring steelheading is around the corner. The Osabo River held this colorful steely last April. Bob Soper from Mikado caught it, 18 pounds, 41 inches long. Not a glamour fish, but a top drawer fish when the fillets are boiled, tastes like lobster, a freshwater drum or sheep's head. A huge nine and a half pounder, John Kulak from Canton, caught it trolling for walleye in Lake Erie off the Edison power plant. Switching to deer, Gary Wynn from Sterling Heights bagged this 10 point with his bow on November 4th, hunting in the evening in St. Clair County. And here's another corn fed buck, this one taken late in the gun season by Dwight Crager from Saginaw. On the 27th of November, 11 in the morning, got an 11 pointer from up around Saginaw Way. Yeah. Uh, right up there. Okay, yeah, I got this in a cornfield in Saginaw County, uh, about a mile from my house. Uh, some guy came down and told me he missed it uh, early in the morning. He told me where it went, so I went over and got it. No kidding. You, you stalked it? Yeah. Walked through a cornfield. Lucky he, I seen him before he seen me. Ah, well, way to go. That was 11 in the morning. Walk in the cornfield. Congratulations. Dwight Krieger from Saginaw. Dwight's our man tonight. His 11-pointer earns him the title as our Michigan Outdoors Big Buck Hunter of the Week. It's now official Governor Blanchard has signed the bill into law making the brook trout the state fish. Word from the National Rifle Association is that an anti-gun bill is coming up for a vote in the U.S. Senate this month. The bill is aimed at banning so-called plastic guns, but because of its sloppy language, it could ban other guns like the 22 caliber Remington Nylon 66. A VFW post in Monroe says it will hold its annual muskrat dinner, even though the Michigan Department of Agriculture has shut down muskrat sales. Representative Jerry Bartnick from the same area has introduced a bill to allow the muskrat dinners to continue. So far, the DNR has checked the dens of five radio-collared bears on Drummond Island. Three of the four sows are doing fine. The fourth sow keeps flushing out of the den. The last bear, the only boar or male bear, has signaled the DNR researchers with flying claws and popping teeth that he doesn't want to be checked. The Natural Resources Commission has approved a ban on waterfall hunting with lead shot in the Lower Peninsula. Beginning with the 88 duck season, it'll be steel shot only. It was a couple of weeks ago that I was the guest speaker at an annual wild game dinner for the Millington Church of God. 
Uh, after dinner, they passed out hunting and fishing awards. They have a big buck award that's kind of unusual, and it's given to the person in the church who really gets out to hunt and fish and enjoys the heck out of it, regardless of what they bring home. This year's winner was a guy by the name of Jim Opperman. Jim had hunted all through the gun deer season without a shot. He'd fish days on end during the summer, and all he caught was one small perch. Still, he kept going out, trying his luck and smiling all the time, really enjoying the outdoors. And that's what it's all about. We love our hunting and fishing awards. We'll be sending out 2,000 of them in the coming months. But let's not forget Jim Opperman and his Big Buck Award. It reminds us that a sportsmanlike attitude is really much more important than a full stringer or game bag. In our mailbag, we get letters from hunters concerned about greener pastures in other states, like the fellow from West Branch who writes, We can't understand why our daily bag limits of waterfowl are considerably lower than in some southern states. Those hunters can repeat large bag limits day after day, while we in Michigan can shoot only two or three ducks a day, depending on the point value. Why? Well, you're talking about a different flyway. Michigan is in the Mississippi Flyway, and all the states in this migratory route of ducks and geese have consistent regulations and seasons. Now, a state like Texas that might have liberal regulations is in a different flyway. Those are different ducks that migrate on that route, and the regulations are different. This weekend at the Central Michigan Sports Show in Lansing, we'll be working with a lot of the charter captains as a part of the hunting and fishing seminars held all three days. You know, charter captains provide a real service to anglers. Not many people can afford the cost of a 30-foot charter boat, but you can use one for a day for $40 to $90 per person, depending on what you're looking for. Captain Steve Pazlaski is a typical old salt who works out of Oscoda, a fun guy to fish with. He took us out one afternoon when only a big charter boat could buck those waves. Well, Alice, all right, she's gonna be all right. It's gonna be rough going out there with the jetty here, but once we get past this boss here, we'll be all right. Is the fishing gonna be any good? I mean, how can it be? Well, all we can do is pray that we can catch some fish today. If we don't catch fish today, you people haven't prayed hard enough. <laughs> really, seriously, is it worth it to go out in this? I think so. We were out this morning and we picked up three of them real fast. We had seven fish on. As a matter of fact, we had a triple. Brought boarded two of them. And we're only going about two hours. Sometimes rough weather can scatter the salmon. Sometimes it doesn't. But waves like this always scatter the boats. With the 37-foot TMB, it's no problem. And the river mouth is always the roughest part of the lake. See that dark water there? That line between Lake Huron water and the muddier Osabo River water? That's where Mike Pazlaski is setting our lines. Now, Steve wants to fish the edge of the warm river water that attracts the salmon's homing, homing instincts. You know, you can see that it isn't so rough out on the lake, and it really didn't take long before we hooked a salmon. In that rougher water, it doesn't take much for a salmon to cross the lines. I picked up a plug from another line, but fortunately, it didn't get tangled. After a oh, six or eight minute battle, we had him at the back of the boat. Right down here. Right down. There we go. All right. Okay, we were just discussing whether they were going to be hitting soon or not. Oh. He's ready to come in the river. All right. Well, that's a nice fish, a bit darker than it would have been if we caught it a few weeks earlier, but the fish is full of fight, the flesh is still firm, and it tastes as good on the grill as you'd want. It hit a spoon with a single hook, and it was hooked solidly. Single hooks have an advantage of not being as easy for a fish to throw. If they're hooked well, you've got them. This is the kind of fishing you'll find on the east side, from Aw Gray all the way up the coast to Alpena and Rogers City. Good action from charter boats, small boats, break walls, or the shore. A great way to spend a September day, or even in the spring, in Michigan outdoors. Been fairly easy. Dress warmly. Get outdoors this weekend. It's a great place to be. See you next week.
rugged shore and woodlands of the north, its history of copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fisheries. To the farmlands of the southern counties, we'll look around again, and all that waits the sportsman in the state of Michigan. Next week on Michigan Outdoors, we'll take a look at a form of ice fishing that's most unusual, spearing. We'll look at ways to go after northern pike and even the monster sturgeon. Kathy Beitler has a terrific, easy-to-make fish recipe and all our usual features, so tune in, same time, same station. Times when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow And the stillness of the forest lies encased in Arctic cold The wind might whisper through the trees, listen if you can It tells you of the beauty in the state of Michigan